Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Kwanza kabisa nataka kuchukua nafasi hii kushukuru viongozi wetu wa kidini kwa sababu ya kutuongoza vizuri na kutuombea sisi zote sana sana kuombea wale ambao ni familia ya wenzetu ambao wametuacha mwaka huu wakiwa kazini ya kulinda nchi yetu na kulinda wenzao <coughs> and because today is a very emotional day and it's not a day of long speeches nataka tu niseme mambo machache kwa Kiswahili na Kizungu kwanza ni kusema pole kwa familia watoto wajane ambao kwa bahati mbaya wameachwa na waume wao na wazazi wao na ningetaka kuwapatia changamoto <coughs> ya kwamba ni heri wale ambao wanakufa wakifanya mambo muhimu ya jamii kuna watu wengi katika nchi hii <coughs> katika ulimwengu mzima wanakufa kila siku wakifanya mambo ya bure unasikia mtu amekufa ame sio kwa sababu ya kitu ya muhimu lakini kwa sababu alikuwa katika mambo ya bure kwa hivyo nataka niwatie moyo ya kwamba your and mothers who are in the service ambao wamekufa katika hali ya kutekeleza kazi ya kulinda wengine they are in good hands in the, in the hands of god because they have died while saving the lives of other people sasa sisi ambao tumebaki tunaomba wakati wetu ukifika hiyo wakati ama huo wakati tupatikane na kifo wakati tunafanya mambo muhimu mambo ya heshima mambo ambayo yatafurahisha wale ambao watabaki na mambo ambayo yatafurahisha Mwenyezi Mungu <coughs> Jambo la pili ni seme na shukuru vile tumekuja hapa sisi zote kuungana na hawa wenzetu officers wote ambao wamekuja kutoka vitengo mbalimbali mbali, representatives of various institutions in the security sector and our partners na washukuru sana kile ambacho ningeomba kuendelea mbele tungetaka umma wa Kenya uelewe kazi ambayo tunafanya sio kazi ya kawaida we would like to be understood those of us who operate in this space do not operate in an ordinary space it is risky and no amount of compensation can speak to the losses the risks and the exposure that we put ourselves to na nikiwa hapo ni shukuru kwa sababu mmoja wetu kama watu ambao wanahusika na usalama wa taifa letu umoja wetu ndio itakuwa nguvu yetu 
na ndiyo itatuwezesha tupate heshima kwa umma na wananchi wa Kenya tukikaa pamoja kikosi chetu cha polisi wa taifa kikosi chetu cha magereza ambao kinazushughulikia wafungwa vile vile taasisi kama IPOA ambayo inaangalia utendakazi wetu wale ambao ni National Police Service taasisi kama National Police Service Commission ambayo ina deal na mambo ya human resources yetu all of us must join hands with our officers and work towards a common end and speak the same language we cannot afford to speak different languages i am very happy and i want to say as the minister responsible that there is no contradiction between the work the inspector general of police is doing and the work ipoa is doing and the work the national police service commission is doing there is no contradiction in fact what there is is complementarity and mutual support for each of the roles of the different institutions kwa hivyo mambo ya ipoa kama afisa wa polisi kama ule tumeambiwa hapa amechukua bunduki ameingia kwa klabu amelewa amekataa kulipa bill anaua watu as we have no business with those kind of officers wafungwa kabisa hata wazitoke wafungwe milele so ipoa we support your oversight on police officers who misuse their firearms and in the process of misusing their they are adulterating damaging and diluting the splendid and sacrificial work which is being done by 99% of the officers especially those who are working in the front line i have been to every county and every corner of this country including the most dangerous operational area and i want to tell you for those who understand the risk the exposure that our officers go through every day is nowhere near what the discussions in towns is about for that reason sisi tumesema hivi kama sera ya serikali officer wa wote wa usalama awe ni officer wa polisi officer wa jeshi Kenya Defense Force Kenya Prison Service the weapons that you are assigned are weapons bought by the taxpayers of the people of Kenya and the authority that you've been given over those weapons is that you must use them to neutralize dangerous criminals and act fast effectively and lawfully in good time and don't allow a criminal to bring you down or to bring down a citizen while you are holding those weapons i repeat every officer of the national police service of the kenya defense forces and all the other disciplined forces who uses their weapons within the law within the constitution in accordance with the standing orders to protect themselves from being harmed by criminals or to protect civilians and citizens from being harmed by criminals the government of Kenya will stand behind you and protect you and no one will harass you not under the law of Kenya not under international law usikubali maisha yako yachukuliwe na wewe umebeba hiyo silaha kujilinda na kulinda wananchi wa Kenya 
na tusijumuishe the kind of security operations that most of our officers do in countering the threat of terror in countering dangerous criminals like armed bandits who have terrorized many people in our country we must not confuse those operations with misuse of firearms by one percent a very small minority of our officers who are tainting the image of the national police service and our other formations number two to our sisters our children who have been left behind no amount of speeches no amount of sympathies can restore the loss you've gone through ours is just to tell you sincerely and honestly that we wish what happened never happened but it, it did happen and also we'll make sure that as you have asked us to do through your representatives we will make sure that we will improve on the capabilities of those who have been left in the service to make it impossible for criminals to harm officers wearing the uniform of our country in this respect we have done two things first when this administration took over office we realized that for many years there has been under investment in the equipment of our national police service and other disciplined forces as you are aware we are at the tail end of a serious equipment modernization program and the inspector general engineer kome will confirm we are almost there and as we speak a team from our country has traveled abroad to inspect some of the equipment that should be landing here in the next few weeks on behalf of the government of kenya i want to promise that the investments that this administration has put in the police moderniz equipment modernization program is going to make it very difficult if not impossible for armed criminals to harm security officers or to harm the people of Kenya going forward and therefore without giving a lot of details into next year we are going to upgrade our air assets our land assets our mobility in especially for serious and dangerous operational areas to provide armored protected and anti mine mobility vehicles so that our officers do not get the exposure that they have got in the past because the cowards who are perpetuating terror will never engage our officers and that is the style of cowards they come at night they play some things in uh, some road at night and they hide in the bushes and so once we sort out our mobility equipment to make sure that it is protected and we have mine sweepers it's going to be impossible for these terrorists to hurt our people and our officers going forward because they are cowards they cannot engage with us directly 
they survive by coming at night, placing some gadgets and disappearing. And therefore, in five years, starting last year, the government is going to use a total of 37 billion to modernize the equipment of our police and the Kenya Prison Service. The government is going to use a similar amount of money to modernize the equipment of our Kenya Defense Forces. And going forward, we will have less of this. Last year, when I started as Minister for Interior, we had lost 54 officers last year. We've tried to make some stopgap interventions. The number this year is 37. Our target is that going forward, we'll bring that number to zero. So, for the time being, we are here mourning our departed colleagues, our brothers who have gone ahead of us in the line of duty, honorably, in the most sacrificial manner. I don't think there is another sacrifice one can make in the service of their country. The DCI officer we lost this year was shot by an armed robber whom we, have been, we had been tracking all the way from Nyanza until Kasarani. And unfortunately, out of the team that was uh, tracking that robber, we lost our officer from the DCI. I have been to hospitals to see some of the luckier colleagues, young men, full of life, hardly in their mid-twenties, but they have lost their ability to work any longer. Some have had their legs amputated. So that is the nature of the sacrifice. And when I hear this general condemnation on security forces, it gets me concerned because sometimes what our officers go through, only their families and God in heaven knows. So, we will get there. We are not there, but we'll get there. As you are aware, as the President also set up a task force to improve the terms and conditions of service, both for National Police Service and the Kenya Prison Service. We are at the tail end, and at the moment you had the President announce there will be a 40% uh, as, as increase uh, of, of salaries which will be staggered in three years for obvious reasons because the country is not in a very good uh, economic situation. Nevertheless, we are determined to make sure that we implement the review or rather the recommendations that have come with that review and also uh, uh, carry this uh, uh, to the next level. I would also want to say that last year when I stood here, for those of you who are here, I did say that we are going to establish an endowment fund which will support families that have been left by our foreign leaders in the line of duty. I did task uh, the institutions concerned to set up an endowment fund. The vice chairperson of the National Police Service Commission, who is here, has assured me that the policy framework for the endowment fund has been completed and is waiting my approval. And I want to commit that we will operationalize the endowment fund this financial year. And that fund, 
I am yet to of course to look at the recommendations on how it will be managed, but it will not be managed by us. It will manage, be managed by families that are affected with of course our support to make sure that we offer scholarship opportunities, medical support, and other distress responses to families who have been left by our dear colleagues. And therefore, we are ready. In fact, we are waiting for that, uh, uh, that uh, process. I think it took a little longer than I expected, but I am glad now that process is complete. And already, we have looked for some money, seed money. And therefore, from this year, we will operationalize that fund and support uh, the families which are seated here. We'll find a way because this is something we should have done a long time ago because every year we have this kind of uh, situation. So we'll find a way of uh, starting somewhere and then we'll see what to do with the historical uh, families who have been affected in the past. And therefore one of the big legacy, legacies of this administration in the security sector will be in the coming few months the establishment of an endowment fund to support families of officers who die in the line of duty. We have also discussed with the National, uh, with the Inspector General and the National Police Service Commission and we have agreed those widows who have the requirements we have a number of uh, positions uh, which we could support you to be employed, not necessarily in the National Police Service, but generally in the public service. And therefore, I want to direct the Commission, the IG, and the PSCs who are concerned to finalize an arrangement and do a needs assessment for the widows who have been affected. We can just start with this year and see those ones we can place for employment, those who have the papers, uh, those who perhaps want uh, we support a child here as a way of saying that we are carrying this burden together and your loved ones died in, uh, in defending uh, others and there is no way we can abandon you now that uh, our officer is gone. So I think we are in good space. Uh, it's not a very good occasion, but it's an occasion to rekindle our love for our country, our patriotism, our focus, and our dedication to get the country, to rid the country of dangerous criminals, terrorists, bandits, drug traffickers, and all the other people who want to hurt us. Kwa hivyo mimi nataka niwashukuru kama vile IG amesema sisi kazi yetu haituruhusu kwenda popote. Na when I say yetu ni sisi sisi ambao tumekaa hapa wakati watu wanapanga masafari sijui ya Christmas wengine wameandika mabarua ya kwenda leave ngambo sisi hatuendi anywhere we will be on duty even on Christmas day so that the rest of the country can be happy and peaceful. So Tunaomba saa ingine mutuelewe. Yeah. And before you criticize someone wearing the uniform of the country, be careful. And I'm not defending those who misuse firearms and those who do the things that IG was saying here. 99% of us have given it our all to make sure that Kenya is safe. And we are going to get a safer country. This Christmas is going to be peaceful. We have finalized our contingency measures for the festive season. And we remain alert. And I want to join the Inspector General Police in warning all the enemies of Kenya. Terrorists, bandits, drug traffickers, all dangerous criminals. Our commitment and our resolve is to make sure that we get rid of you. And before you destroy Kenya, 
we will destroy you because that is our constitutional and legal mandate. From Lamu to Northeastern to North Rift to everywhere. I want to thank all of you, colleagues, from all the different agencies represented here, because contrary to what the IG said, when you hear, if you are in charge of something, and I know many of you are in charge of something here, if you hear people saying you are doing well, it is not you who is doing well. It is the people who assist you to perform your duties who are doing well. So, contrary to what the IG said, uh, those who think we are doing well, I don't want to say whether they are right or wrong, but I want to say they should specify and explain that we are doing well because of the people that you see around here. It's because of many people. Some of them will never be known. Some of them have died as, as we are celebrating their heroism here. Some of them will never even be appreciated by anybody. So uh, I just want to thank you for the teamwork. Um, and I'm sure during the festive season we'll be meeting with many of you because we'll be up and about. And uh, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Na IG, ile maneno alisema, mimi na ye, tutapanga maneno ya Christmas, sai, this afternoon. Nagili tulikuwa tumeza au band, ata band, itapata Christmas. I wish you God's blessings. I wish you well. I want to end again by thanking the men of God seated on my right. Your spiritual nourishment, your help in focusing us to do this difficult and painful job will be rewarded, will be honored by the people of Kenya, the government of Kenya, and God in heaven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Serikali hii ambayo imeongozwa na mheshimiwa rais William Ruto ndiyo itakuwa serikali ya kumaliza kutoka Kenya hii shida na aibu ya uhalifu na kutojali sheria. We have to work hard so that we can justify the faith, the commitment, the sacrifice you have made to make us who we are. I am really, Your Excellency, very impressed by the Kidik style of money. Akiamua ni hapa, hata kwa zikuta, anapiti hapa. Wote 37 ni wapokezi wa tunuku hiyo, lakini kwa sababu ya muda, tutachukua kwa rukusa yako kumi, na wale wengine, tukitoka tu hapa, na wawo pia utapewa tunuzao wale za tunukiwa, pale kwa mlangwa wa kuondokea. Kwa hivyo kwa sasa, Naomba tafadhali kwa heshima niweze kumuita B Faiza Jiboson B Faiza Jiboson huyu ni mwenza muondoka Joshua Mutua aje mbele na kwa ruhusa umkubalie msaidizi wa naibu inspector general wa AP service bwana Davis Lumatu aje ampe zawadi yake ndogo sasa pili uh, mheshimiwa waziri naomba nimuite B Judith Jerop huyo ni mjane wa bwana Christopher Kipwech Kimeli na hapo nitaomba eh, mkurugenzi wa taasisi yetu ya upelelezi wa jinai bwana Mohame 